Dr. Mary Lake Poland flew to Eritrea, she thought, to talk to a health service official there about offering to help with breast cancer. I flew to Eritrea, talked to him, and he looked at me and he said, we have no mammogram units, so looking at breast cancer is not really possible, and we have no pathologist to read pap smears, so that's out too. What we do need is somebody who can repair holes between your bladder and your vagina, or your rectum and your vagina, from childbirth damage. And if you can do that, we'd love to have you help. She went back to Stanford to ask her team about performing free fistula surgery for thousands of Eritrean women whose lives are ruined by difficult, usually first, deliveries. They occur because, remember when you deliver a baby, the head comes down into the pelvis, and the pelvis is ringed by bones and the symphysis, the anterior pelvis, the baby's head pushes against that. And if for some reason you can't deliver, the baby's too big, the pelvis is too small, then the pressure against the symphysis kills the tissue. And you have what's left is a hole and a leak between the bladder and the vagina. If the pressure is on the rectal side, the posterior side, then you have a rectal vaginal fistula and you leak stool. She says fistula isn't just a problem in Eritrea or even just in Africa. It's women in resource low settings where there is not an adequate obstetrical care and labor and delivery care. And in fact, in New York City, before we had surgical procedures to deliver babies, there was a fistula hospital. So this is really not uh, related to where you live, it's related to what your medical resources are. 100,000 fistulas that occur annually, most of them in Africa, Southeast Asia, and some in Central and South America. Fistula is a condition that destroys marriages and the woman's ability to earn a living, even to go back to her family for support. You can imagine, if you leak urine and feces, you smell, your clothes are dirty, uh, people don't want to be around you. You can't go to work because nobody wants to be with you, and your husband may not want to be with you. Most of the women who have this problem, well, for example, in Eritrea, 80% of the women were delivered in their homes outside of any uh, physician or midwifery care, and the women are then ostracized. Their husbands leave them. In most cases, the babies die, so they don't have children, and they're a burden to their family. Dr. Polin and her team were able to save 1,000 women over the more than 15 years she traveled to Eritrea. One special woman situation really warmed her heart. Hansu came in in 2004, and the women come from all over the country. I mean, it's a country of four to five million people. They take buses, they come on donkeys. If you go outside the capital, you see women riding camels, but they come to us and she came from a distance away. She was leaking. It was impossible to fix the hole. And so the surgeons did a diversion procedure on her. We keep the women for several weeks or a month or two until they're healed, and then they go back to their homes. She went home and she came back three years later with a beautiful baby boy. She had not only gotten pregnant once and had a miscarriage, she got pregnant again, and she delivered that baby vaginally after the big abdominal surgery she'd had. Dr. Poland became so involved with fistula patients, she raised money to build a center for the women who come to the hospital to wait for surgery there. We thought we could raise enough money to build a fistula waiting home in the hospital in Mendefera. And so we worked with UNFPA and friends of UNFPA because you need not only the Ministry of Health and the physicians from the United States, but you really need a UN partner to do anything in the developing world. And we were able to raise enough money and we built a 40-bed waiting home. 